Hello, this is Steve Ramona, your host for Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. I want to thank our sponsors, InPhone, and with InPhone, you can place your business on everybody's cell phone, turn their business into a web app, and with a click of a button, they'll have access to you 24-7. And also Pantheon.fm. Have you ever thought about monetizing and taking your podcast to the next level? Well, Pantheon can do that. Let us show you how. Reach out to Steve Ramona, the host, at info.co slash sr1, and I will go over with you how you can make your podcast really stand out. Let's enjoy the show. Thanks again, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. This is your host, Steve Ramona. And I'm excited about my guest because he's doing a multiple things, but his faith is what guides him. And we had a long talk, our first meeting, how faith and the power of that. And whether you're religious or not, just faith in what you do. We don't want to hope, but we want to hope, we want faith and believe. And that's what my guest David does. David, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. So good to be here. Faith. Let's just jump into faith. What's that mean to you? Well, it's, it's, it's personal, right? As, as well as it should be. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, went to church most every Sunday, my entire childhood. And when I turned 18, graduated from high school, I moved out of my parents' house and didn't darken the door of another church unless I had to, you know, weddings and and things like that. Um, but over that next eight years, I, lived life my way. I did the things that I wanted to do and I tried to build my own life and God in his kindness allowed me to fail at at everything, relationships, friendships, being a father. I I was got married at 22, had two kids right away. So at 26 I was going through divorce, hadn't been with my children, my ex-wife, soon to be ex-wife began seeing somebody else who she eventually married and she's with today. God bless her. It was, it was who she's supposed to be with. But when we were going through the mediation process and waiting on court dates and stuff like that, not seeing my children and knowing that they were now being raised by a different man, just ripped my heart out. And in exasperation and depression and um, coping with lots and lots of alcohol. Mm -hmm. I came to this place where I threw my hands up in the air. Literally, I I threw my hands up in the air and I shouted at the sky, what do you want me to do? And I think it was probably the very first time that I was genuinely coming to God on his terms. Um, You know, a lot of people want Jesus to be their savior. They want to have that eternal fire insurance, but they don't want to submit to him as Lord. And I say in God's kindness, he allowed me to experience failure because I really genuinely needed his leadership. I had accepted his um, salvation, but, you know, and whether or not I was truly saved people, yeah, that's a, that's another different theological conversation that people can have. But for me personally, I, I didn't experience God's goodness as far as what he's able to do for us in this life, because I wasn't willing to submit to his leadership. And um, at, at that moment, when I, when I genuinely asked him, even though I was really pissed off in all honesty, what do you want me to do? He said to me, it's the first time I ever heard him speak, and it was like audible, but it was in my heart, very, very difficult to explain. He said, you're going to preach. And at that moment, I just began believing that not more than the idea that there's this God out there, right? This theological belief, it became very personal. And and so I literally started laughing like, okay, you know, I'd, I'd probably rather get a, a root canal than then get up and speak in front of a hundred people or any group of people. But if that's what you want me to do, I'm just going to do whatever you tell me to do. And it's been a ride ever since. I love what you said allowed to fail. It's so, so backwards thinking people think. And I love that you said that because you turned a negative into a positive, correct? 
I, I, I would say he did it. You know, yeah, exactly. I, I wasn't, I wasn't smart enough to figure it out, but he and his kindness did that for me. It's a great message for people to hear that it's okay to fail. I think people are indecisive because they're afraid to fail and it's okay. You make this decision. It didn't work out. You pivot and you do something else. I know I'm making it sound right. simple and there's bigger decisions and smaller decisions, but I think indecisiveness is a big problem with this world today. Uh, 2023 in case this is heard five years later is all the things that have been going on in this world and things that have happened. Let's talk about your podcast. Cause I love what you're doing with your podcast and what's your mission of this podcast. Well, it, it's, it's changed a little bit over time. It began with a personal desire to read through the Bible myself and with my family and a few friends. I made a Facebook post about a year ago. It was in um, maybe November of 22. Who wants to read through the Bible with me? My wife had been doing this chronological Bible reading plan. I, I, it's a personal conviction that reading the Bible every day, studying the word of God is very important. And so I became more and more passionate about it. And I wanted to do the chronological plan. So this, this Facebook post got about I don't, maybe 30, give or take responses of friends and family saying, yeah, yeah, I want to do that. And then one of my friends says, how about you start a Facebook group to remind us every day what we're supposed to be reading? And it, it, it started with that and started doing that, I think in November of last year. And I was just a three, three to five minute summation of that day's reading. And I'd been feeling this stirring, this calling to do like a daily devotional. And it's so often, I think when people start ministries, they think it's for other people. But what I've learned is it's more for myself than it is for anybody else, right? God, God wants me to know his word. And the natural outflow is I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, as I'm learning, I'm helping other people get to know God's word as well. And so it's kind of evolved. I started doing a podcast because my children don't get on Facebook every day. And there were a few other people who aren't tech savvy, who just want to be able to listen in the car instead of watching a Facebook video. Mm -hmm. But Steve, over the last nine months, and we, you know, I was telling you this, it's grown from a couple dozen friends and family to about a thousand people a day are are checking out this podcast. And it's just, it's blown my mind because I never expected that, but I love it. It's fantastic. So you do daily, a podcast with a daily devotion. It's every single day. Yes, sir. How, how can people find it? It's uh, really easy. If you go to our website, bibleinorder.com, just like it sounds, bibleinorder.com. Uh, we've got links to the YouTube channel and, and we're on Apple and Spotify and Google and, and all of those different providers. Do you take suggestions from people that want to hear different devotionals or are you, you following the book, the book? Itself? I we're, we're following the book and honestly for next year, for 2024, I don't know that we'll do, I don't know if we will do the, the chronological plan again. Um, I love it. It, it, it takes a lot of time and there, and when you're trying to cover two or three chapters of the Bible, it's, it's hard to fit in extra, extra stuff. Um, I would like to be able to really do deep dives into very specific topics. And, um, uh, we definitely, absolutely. That was a long answer, but we definitely take requests. So people out there thinking about doing a podcast and, we've talked about and I help people build their podcast, but what happened, what's changed in your life since you've done the podcast ROI of the podcast, not financially, but you personally. The, the daily discipline of mm. studying God's word, because it's forcing me to study God's word, you know, and we were tomorrow's podcast. I just got done recording is the last three chapters of the book of Ezekiel. Now I've read the Bible cover to cover a few times. I don't know how many I've read through Ezekiel a few times, but I never really got it because a lot of times when we're reading the Bible, we're just, and, and this could be true for anything, right? I used to get so disappointed when I would read a book that was assigned to me in middle school or high school <laughs> and I'd go to a school and they would say, did you read the book? Yes, I read the book. Tell me about it. 
well, I don't remember any of it. You know, I just, I wasn't paying attention. My eyes looked at every word. I promise I read the book, but I didn't, I didn't absorb any of it. And so now I'm being forced to absorb it. And I have a thousand people holding me accountable every day. And God in his kindness is using that to change me. And that could be done with any book. Think and Grow Rich. I mean, the millions of books. That's kind of what you're teaching or educating. It doesn't have to be the Bible. You love it to be a Bible. It could be mm -hmm. any book what you're doing, right? I think I think we are all humans are set apart, right, from every other species on on the planet by our ability to grow and learn and reason. And so whether you I was I was having a conversation with an atheist earlier today. Whether you're an atheist or a Christian or belong to some other religion or or no religion, what whatever, follow your conscience. But by all means, grow. You know, read a book. Think and grow rich is phenomenal. Anything by Napoleon Hill is going to cause you to think and and help you to become a better person, right? So it's not necessarily we're we're all on our different path. And I'm not going, of course, I'm a Christian. Um, I don't even like that word. I think it's overused and, and terribly maligned because of the acts of a lot of people claiming to be Christians. But, you know, that's another topic as well. Yeah. To get started is always the big problem. We've talked about that even with you. But what really took you over the took you over the edge to go, okay, let's do this. Let's get this started. Because I have talked to people who have been waiting years to start a podcast. What's the one tip or what did you do to say, let's do this? I stumbled upon something that I love and I had somebody ask me just the other day, like, I'm going to start a podcast. What should I talk about? I'm like, man, if you don't know what you're going to talk about, then don't start a podcast. You know, I mean, it's great. Everybody and their brother wants to start a podcast right now and, and interview people and do, do fun things. And, and it looks cool. Right. And I've heard that I can make money doing this. I mean, Maybe you can help me with that, Steve. We'll have it. We'll have a conversation yeah. later. Yeah. But the thing is, you've you've got to be passionate about it, right? Um, and until you until you are, I would actually, I would probably, if you don't know what you want to talk about or what you want to focus on, you probably need a good coach. And I can recommend some coaches, but I had a great coach last year who brought me to my knees um, because I was, I was trying to build my real estate business. And this, this business was like, see, I could just never get it to, to function like a well-oiled machine. I've done really well in real estate, but I've never gotten to be that top 1% making a billion dollars. You know, I've done really well. And I have a lot of agents who look at me going, it's not fair. You know, how, how, how can you sell so many houses? And I'm not just trying to get started. We always go wrong when we're comparing ourselves to other people. It's very easy to do that, but we're so good at lying to ourselves. But if you're going to start a business, whatever it is, whether it's a podcast, find something that you love and that you're passionate about and you will rise to the top. Purpose is the whole key. Yeah. Podcast, real estate, you have the right purpose, which you do. It's fantastic. I, I like that because again, everybody wants to join a site, uh, shiny object syndrome. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see all these podcasts. Oh, Steve Ramona had a, a sponsor and da, da, da. that's what I want. I talk to people all the time. But it's interesting about a podcast, and you're doing this to the T. It's an exchange of ideas. Yeah. With, in your case, thousands of people, in my case, thousands of people. So it's really a win-win, and and the purpose has to be the whole thing. It's doing business with the service heart. My purpose, it's pretty spread out there. Your purpose, yeah. devotion, to get out the good word of the Lord. Yeah. What the people like. And the funny thing is, people look at Joe Rogan as that podcast. He's not a podcast. He's Yellowstone TV series. He is, you know, uh, Creed the movie. I just talked about this morning. That's why I can't. But any of those big block, by, it's a production. And people either say, I can't do it because it's that, or I want to be that. And we just talked about this in church. You're being alone with your um, exceptionalism. And I forget the other one. But they're both sides of the spectrum. I'm really good at it. Nobody can do it. Or I can't do it because I. that's a lonely place. Mm -hmm. It's a podcast that puts you in the middle because everybody can do it. 
and they're mm-hmm. fun, right? Are you having fun doing it? I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Would you tell me before the show, what about getting up in the morning? Oh yeah, it's one of the reasons I want to get up out of bed in the morning. You know, it's like I I have a purpose. You know, um, I I genuinely believe this is what God created me to do. It's the very first thing He spoke to me was, "You are going to preach." And of course, you know, preach, teach, they're, they're very closely related and, and they overlap quite a bit. Yeah, no, I love that. Real quick before I forget, let's do a shout out. How can people get a hold of you? Want to listen to your devotional or ask you questions about your devotional, ask you questions about real estate? How can they find you? Uh, the, the easiest way, if people want to listen to the Bible in order is the name of the podcast, go to Bibleinorder.com. And there are links there to, um, you know, the, the podcast as well as the YouTube channel. You can stream it right from the podcast or right from the website if you want to. If you want to reach out to me and you can't remember my name, if you Google my name, if you say David Doty, D-O-T-Y and Realtor, and you'll, you're probably going to, I'll probably be the first thing that pops up. Um if, if that doesn't work, go to BibleInOrder.com, look at the About Me page, and I'm pretty sure my phone number is still right there. So, I mean, I highly recommend people text me or email me. Um, if you call me, I probably am doing something like this, and I'm not going to answer the phone. Um, and I'm a lot of times concerned that it's going to be a sales pitch. I mean, we with as being, being a realtor, my phone yeah. number is everywhere and i'm a member i think so i'm licensed in three states i'm a managing broker in north carolina and south carolina so i'm a member of like 10 or 12 different realtor boards as well as i'm licensed down here in florida and um the realtor the real estate commissions and the realtor board sell our phone numbers and so i get texts and phone calls every single day i can't tell you probably 10 times literally 10 times every single day from people trying to sell me insurance, health insurance, um, sell me leads, sell me, you know, website optimization, all that, all the different stuff. So I, I don't generally answer the phone, but if you text me, I will definitely respond. Well, let's do this to make it even easier. If you right. text or email David only, if you call him, it won't work. I will give the first three people that do that, that mention this podcast or my name, a $20 Amazon gift card. Wow. Okay. The email text and just say, Hey, I found you on Steve's podcast or doing business servants heart. David will give me your contact info. I just need your email. I just did three yesterday or Saturday. I sent three gift cards out. I do do it. People go, do you really do it? Yeah, I do it. Uh, just got to mention the podcast because what David is doing is changing lives. He's too humble to tell you that. So I'm going to tell it for you. <laughs> and he might say, because a devotional, whether it's faith, Think you grow rich, it you're growing. And as we grow, no matter what, we will be better. And that's what he's helping you doing. So I want to jump into real quick real estate. Because I have a lot of realtors that listen to this show. You mentioned you're part-time, but you've kind of got the secret sauce. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I I'm certainly not a business genius, and I'm certainly not the the most productive real estate agent out there, but I've done really well. I mean, I've still got four kids at home. I've got six kids total, you know, so, so with four kids and a dog, my wife and I just transitioned. We moved from Charlotte, North Carolina down to Naples, Florida. Um, you know, we don't live in a mansion, but we got a, a, a what I think is a really nice home with a pool, um, which everybody, you need a pool. If you're moving to Florida, buy a house with a pool, you, you need it down here. Um, and so to be able to do that and still spend, you know, I'm, I'm spending probably 25, 30 hours a week on the podcast. You know, I'm not selling houses for those 25 and 35, 25, 30 hours a week. And I still want to have dinner with my family pretty much every night of the week. You know, there, there, there are some exceptions, right? Um, we came down here actually to partner with the church and, and we're, we're at church, you know, pretty much every time the doors are open, um, I'm still selling houses, you know, not as many as I used to, but even a couple of years ago, you know, if you, if you can make over $200,000 in a year working 20 hours a week, you know, that's not bad. That's really not bad. And it's allowed us to have this lifestyle change. Um, again, you know, we haven't 
reached retirement yet. You know, I'm still in my forties. We have, we have a long ways to go where my wife and I are trying to start new businesses because we have a lot more work that we want to do. There are a lot more people out there who need to be helped. We want to fund safe houses for battered women and fight human trafficking. And we have, there's a lot to be done out there and it all takes money. It takes faith, but it takes money too. Right. And so I don't want to be the Christian who's like got his hand out asking people for money all the time. I want to fund the kingdom myself. And I believe God's calling us to do that. So real estate's a great way to do that. Um, so I would say for people who want to get started in real estate, work your sphere. I mean, if you're just starting off, you don't have money to buy leads from Zillow for five or ten thousand dollars a month, you know. I mean, that's no way to build a business anyway. But work your sphere, work your sphere of influence, build relationship. I used to tell my team, we are in the relationship business. That's what our business is. We don't chase money. We take care of people and then the money comes. That's just the way it works. We help other people build their businesses and then they send us referrals. It's it's just, you know, you you reap and you sow, right? You get back what you give out. Um, I would say that um, work your geographic farm. So I was very fortunate in, in North Carolina, about 80% of my business came within a three mile radius of my home. I'd loved walking to listing appointments when you can walk to listing appointments and walk to put the sign out in the yard, walk to put the lock box out, walk to meet the inspector. You know, Hey, if you can go to a listing appointment at four o'clock in the afternoon and still be home for dinner, like that's winning, right? When you get calls and, and people, and, and, you know, we're talking about Every home, the average price point in in the United States now is what like 460, 450, 460. And so, you know, the the average commission is about 2.4% of that. So, you know, do the math. Every home you sell on average, you're gonna make about ten thousand dollars. So, I mean, that's that's huge. If you can do that for walk in your neighborhood, be a good neighbor, get out there, make some friends, and and you'll it, it'll take some time, but You'll, you'll be all right. Those are great tips. And knowing a lot of realtors, and, and I work with a lot of realtors, it, it's an emotional, one of your highest emotional events. The most money you probably spend on anything unless you mm -hmm. start a business, which most people don't at that level. Mm -hmm. The building of relationships is the key because I'm not going to give you a million, you know, I'm giving you a million, but I'm not going to spend a million dollars because you say you're David Doty. Right. I want to know David Doty's heart, his passion. You've got to share that. And that audience, if you're going to be a realtor or are a realtor, that it works now. If you haven't done it, start today. And just go out knocking on doors, your neighbors, introduce yourself. Don't say, hey, I'm a realtor. You're selling your home. Kind of going right. on a rampant here. But that's why I love what you said. It's just, hey, I'm Steve. Hey, Tony, nice to meet you. Yeah, let's stay yeah. connected. Let's get together for a coffee, whatever. Yeah. Let them ask you, what do you do? I'm a realtor for you know, Keller Williams, you know, my office is down the street. I just want to meet you. Great. Yeah. And then you just build. And the problem with real estate, I see too, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I'm a realtor. This is a long play. It's not, Hey, I've got this widget. Hey, David, buy it. Great. Okay. It's going to solve my problem. That leads to having them to get to know you and being patient. Is that another good tip? Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, there there are the one percent out there who are absolute machines, who are cold calling machines, who like are calling fizzbos and knocking on doors and doing all of the really hard stuff. And they're very successful because they're they're good at it. But if you hire a coach who tells you to do that and it absolutely makes your skin crawl and you cannot do it, then that's not the coach for you. That's not the business model for you. And if you need a steady income until your business grows, as you grow your sphere of influence, then by all means, keep your day job or, or go wait tables or do whatever you have to do to keep food on the table and keep the rent paid. But if you build relationally and people can sense that people know if you're genuine or not. And if you are only like building the friendship so that they're going to use you as your realtor. People can feel that too. It's like, this is a no strings attached. I'm going to serve people. I'm going to be a good friend. I'm going to be a good neighbor. And you know, the rest takes care of itself. Sometimes it takes a while. I mean, I starved my first year of real estate. I starved. If my wife hadn't been working, I would have been living with my mom again. I mean, yeah. so I'm, I'm not kidding, but because I'm not that personality, I am not the door knocking, cold calling type of personality. 
those who are and who are good at it, God bless them and they're, and they're killing it and they deserve it because they're willing to do what a lot of people aren't willing to do. Yeah. Many layers to an onion. And that's so well said because they're not wrong either way. But again, it goes back to purpose and passion, which you said earlier. Audience, you can see why I had David on the show. He is a rock star. He's successful in two different entities. They're completely different, which means the door is open for anybody to do whatever you want. But again, make sure it's passionate. So thank you for being on. I think I'm going to have you back because I think my audience is going to reach out and say, bring David back for part two, which I will do if you're willing to do that. And we'll talk about that more. But what last thing I'd love for you, you've given us so many great tips. What's another tip you can help my audience in their journey that you've learned? Be true to your heart. Take some time. Take some time out. Just, just stop and devote yourself to silence for as long as you possibly can and listen to that that still small voice that's speaking to you and follow it listen to it um as far as real estate somebody who wants to grow a business Focus on the relationship. Become a listing agent. I have tips for that. I, I'm happy to have a conversation. No, no, no cost. Um, join a brokerage that's going to pay you a very high percentage of your commission. Um, there's no need to spend to to, to pay twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to a brokerage anymore. Those days that ship has sailed. Those days are over. Um, I don't know. How's that? How's that for tips, Steve? I could keep going. That's that's perfect. Thank you again, David, for being on. Appreciate you. It's a lot of fun. Thanks so much.